Uh, how was your cake and cookies? Yes? You like? Check your web browser. Uh, let's see. Well, we have something to thank for that and all of what we're doing here. We have uh, Northrop Grumman to thank. Give it up for Northrop Grumman. Uh, let's see. Our next performer is from New Hampshire, and I just found out something really exciting, so I want you to applaud really loud. He just submitted his thesis today. I can only say this, I don't understand it at all, but I'll be going to say this as well. Uh, like Frederick Douglass, Edgar Allan Poe never used a computer, and from a secret page in Poe's diary, we're about to find out what. Now you might think it might have something to do with the fact that they didn't have, uh, they lived in the 1800s, but that's not it. And we're going to find out what it is. Here it is, Ben and Town. First, I have a famous poem by Maya Angelou called I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. A free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends, and dips his wing in the orange sun rays, and dares to clean the sky. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the caged bird sings of freedom. The free bird thinks of another breeze, and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees, and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn, and he names the sky his own. But a caged bird stands on the grave of dreams, his shadow shouts with nightmare screams, his wings are clipped and his feet are tied. So he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill, for the caged bird sings of freedom. <laughs> dig. I dig. You dig, he digs, she digs, they dig, yins dig, <laughs> we dig. It's not a very complicated poem, but it is very deep. <laughs> Once upon a midnight dreary, fingers cramped and vision bleary. System manuals piled near me, wasted paper on the floor. Longing for the warmth of bed sheets, still I sat there doing spreadsheets. <laughs> Having got them finally complete, pulled the jump drive from the drawer. Feeling brave, invoking save, I, being glad to end this chore, waited for the file to store. Only this, and nothing more. Deep into the phosphor peering, long I sat there wondering, fearing. And those harsh sounds I was hearing, as the disc turned, churning more. Save, I cried, you bleeping mother, save my data and no other. But I did not have my druthers, and it had not heard my roar. Ghastly grim, it blinked and taunted, haunted as my patience wore. Fail, abort, retry, ignore. Carefully, I weighed the choices as the disc made devilish noises. Churning louder, getting boisterous, less a grumble, more a snore. Was this some occult illusion, some maniacal intrusion, or result of some delusion, one I'd never faced before?
Clearly, I must press a key to make a choice of either or, not allowing neither nor, just abort, retry, ignore. With my fingers pale and trembling, slowly toward the keyboard bending, longing for a happy ending, hoping all would be restored, praying for some guarantee, so lightly did I press a key. But on the screen, what did I see? As if declaring words of war. All trust had failed, just like this disc. It devastated all rapport. Terms I wish I could censor. Failed. Abort. Retry. Ignore. I tried to catch the chips off guard. I pressed again, but twice as hard. I pleaded with that cursed demon, begged and cried, and then I swore. Flailing now in desperation, trying random combinations, still there came the incantation, just as senseless as before. Cursor blinking, without thinking, winking nonsense, I abhor words that at my senses tore. Failed. Abort. Retry. Ignore. There I sat, distraught, exhausted, by my own machine, accosted. Getting up, I turned away and paced across the office floor. Whereupon a dreadful sight, a white-hot bolt cut through the night. Grief stricken by a ghastly fright, pure terror shook me to the core. Lightning zapped my precious data, lost and gone forevermore. <laughs> now in darkness I abhor, cursed, abort, we try, ignore. <laughs> to this day I do not know the place to which lost data go. I bet they go to heaven where the angels have them stored. As for productivity, well, I fear that it goes straight to hell. But as for sure as AMD and Intel will produce another core, you'll be one day left to wander, lost upon some dismal shore, asked by fickle gods of yore to choose, abort, retry, ignore. <laughs> Say, I was supposed to say something like, well, that was deep, but yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the reaction I figured I guess I didn't want to do it, but I sort of had to because it's in the paper.